I've been having a nice time watching TV. I've been watching a lot of classic TV. I'm not watching the Love Island shit. I'm not watching the Bake Off and any of that. I'm still watching the greatest television program ever to grace the screen. I am, of course, talking about Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. Yeah. Big fucking cheer from the audience. You're tapping down there. You're a fan of the show. What's your favourite version of the show, British or American? Which you reckon is better? No, 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 no. The American one, I'll tell you for why, because they all call him Chef Ramsay. I love it, I can't get enough of it. It's so toady and it gives me an erection. Yes, Chef Ramsay, no Chef Ramsay, three bags full Chef Ramsay. Also, the Yanks don't fuck with the formats. The same show every single week starts with an interview with a chef and he goes, I think Chef Ramsay's really gonna like my food. <laughs> I think whatever's wrong with the restaurant is not my food. I think Chef Ramsay's probably going to get me a job at one of his restaurants when this one goes under because I'm just a to go... And then Chef Ramsay arrives, doesn't he, with his weird, craggly, bollock face. <laughs> Jumping up and down like this when he talks for no fucking reason at all. <laughs> Do that. Does this with his hand. Because, yeah... They opened Mama Cass's pizzeria three years ago. <laughs> Things haven't been going well. I'm here to see if I can help. Walks inside, apropos of nothing, goes, fuck me. <laughs> it's not a polite way to walk into a room, Gordon. He will then meet a 17-year-old female waitress who will begin speaking to her in a way that was not acceptable in 1952. He then sits down, orders the entire menu, chef flips out. What the fuck wouldn't he? Who's ever done that? <laughs> Waitress brings him the plate of food and he looks her dead in the eye and goes, Is this fresh? And she goes, Yeah, I think it's fresh. I think it's fresh. I think it's fresh. And he'll stare at her and say something horrible like, Yeah, fresh is my nutsack after a run. <laughs> Who speaks to people like that? And he sits down every single week without fail. He sits down, puts the food in his mouth, and he goes, Oh, oh, oh. Uh, no, that is fucking nasty. What the fuck is that? Uh. Food is never that bad. I'm 38 years of age. I've only ever done that once in my life. I was seven years old, went into my mum's kitchen, ate cat shit that I thought was chocolate mousse. It's the only time it's acceptable to behave like that. The waitress brings the plate of saliva back to the chef and he goes, Oh, Chef Ramsay didn't like my food? No! He never likes the food. This program's been on television for 17 years. Why don't you watch an episode of it before you agree to go on it? He's not there to help your restaurant. He's there to punish you for opening a restaurant. The program could be more accurately called How Fucking Dare You, You Pleb. I love it. Fucking love it. He'll then meet the owner of the restaurant who invariably is in half a million quid's worth of debt. He will begin speaking to that person in a textbook, textbook abusive husband way. You're like, you're a piece of shit, you know that? You've got no dick. You've got no dick. Why did you think you could open a restaurant? Don't look at your wife, look at me. You've got no dick. You're filth. You disgust me. You are nothing to me. You are nothing. And then he'll turn on a knife edge and be like, hey buddy, I love you. You're a good guy, yeah? You can save your restaurant. You just need to believe in yourself. Big dick, yeah? Believe in yourself, yeah? Do you feel good, yeah? Do you feel good? Yeah, you feel good. Confident in yourself, do you? Yeah, you feel good, yeah? Then why is this so fucking dirty? That is textbook abuse. And then he's there for a week, and what does he do? He bullies and emasculates and bullies and emasculates and bullies and emasculates and bullies and emasculates. Then he buys them some tablecloths and he leaves. <laughs> God forgive me, God forgive me, it's my favourite thing. <laughs> I used to like to think of myself as quite a good person, but in the cold light of day, I have to admit to you, I have spent the last two years of my life sat on my living room floor, drinking Stella Artois in my underwear, watching a millionaire bully the soon-to-be-bankrupt. <laughs> and I've never been happier. <laughs>